So the takeaways from this one are to be minimalist as much as possible with my reptile keeping. You know, I'm all about efficiency, saving time, as well as um, having the most that I can. So less is more, more is less. <laughs> the other thing is saving money with food. So getting specific animals and also breeding insects. You guys better breed. Mate, are you all good? You're like a pancake. Look at that. Holy, are you? Mate, I'm worried, eh? You get worried about these guys. Come on, help, let's go. Boop. All right. I think he's I think he's okay. Yeah, probably just if anything I disturbed his uh weird, weird placement of his body. Yeah, he's like, come on man. Oh mate, we'll be hungry. Yeah. I only feed him every like two, three days. All right, well enjoy. You've been pulling out your gar you've been pulling out your grasses again, mate. There you go. Yeah, old Ferg, he's gonna chop away at that. Loves his bloodworms. So I've just got to the supermarket to pick up the essentials. Kind of transitioning to this like vlog style for a bit. Just have fun with it, I suppose. With my Jenny is a ectotherm content creator. Um, when I say essentials, uh, go, yeah, boy, jackpot. Well, essentials. This is what I'm talking about. Okay, car starting, fantastic, great start. So one of, like, one of the easiest things, so the reason why I just had to do this is I suppose just something different, something. Yeah, you know, I enjoy the idea of creating videos, I enjoy vlogging, I enjoy creating content, and I enjoy ectotherms, and it's a hobby, it's been a hobby for most of my life, so, well, basically all my life, so I thought, oh, why not just start talking about it. Right now, I'm in my garage uh, with all my animals. That's so basically where I'm doing all my keeping, my filming. I mean, I've got the native geckos outside, obviously. But the prepare, preparing for the next phase is having a plan, thinking strategically about what my next situation will be and look like, what the reptile room needs to be. So, you know, it's not just about, so just like, uh, uh, it's not so much about building something, but it's just thinking about the next space and come on. Yeah, it's, it's, it's green light left, green light left. Yeah, green means go. Yeah, cool. So yeah, it, it's about the next space and it's like I've always wanted a lot and I probably will have a lot if I ever get the time. I mean, like I said, I've got a job, got a kid, but a lot's going on. So right now I'm trying to be as minimalist as I can, as t efficient with my time as I can. So spending the least amount of time with my animals, but still making sure that they get the most out of my time. So, you know, making sure the husbandry, my husbandry processes are really, really efficient and snappy. You know, feeding is optimum. Um, they're not like spinning an arm and a leg every week, every month on food. So I'll get into that. I'll get into, you know, how, in regards to the three things. So, you know, minimalist, uh, breeding bugs, and picking the best animals, or the most appropriate animals for that same situation. So, let's get into it. Hot man, but you know what? Heat means everything's out. This dude's always eyeballing me, man. All right, you know what we're doing today? We are setting up our breeding cricket tub. So I'm gonna move some mealworms, some ice spots into some much smaller enclosures and much more Tupperware so I can set these up for the bigger animals. It's getting hot so I can breed crickets inside without having to worry too much about temperature. All right, so you know what we do with this? We just now go through all this old brand and get out all as many wheel worms as I can. I can't keep all of this. I'm gonna have to buff most of this out. So I try and salvage as many as I can, put them in this much smaller tub, which will be my source and holding thing. Uh, the thing is, I don't, I don't rate breeding mealworms. Um, they're kind of annoying to breed. They take a lot of work for very minimal reward, uh, meaning that they just take ages and they're not that much of a food source for the sea animals especially i have like a weird mix of i only have like five animals that eat mealworms which is leopard geckos and the cunningham skinks i don't give these to the natives so it's a lot of effort for and even then they're like so small i have to feed like 50 of them to the skinks alone um and that's 50 gone so yeah we're going to crickets see how we go with crickets right season to start all right it's warm and i can keep them inside with minimal effort, I'm hoping. But we'll see, we'll see. All right, same thing with this. See, got isopods, let's downsize. Um, there's also like a lot of unwanted like centipedes in here, so I do need to split it up. Oh, these guys are grumpy. They're like, oh, come on, man. We've just, we, we've just woken up. So let's get these into something much smaller. So for me, uh, isopods are really, really good to have on you in the colder months, especially if you're at the bottom of the world I and mean, you have access to these guys and you don't want to spend too much on food uh, for these animals. So, I mean, not everything eats the isopods. These are mainly kept for my tree frogs and native species of gecko that I keep with permits, of course. It's a really good option to have in the winter when there's no flies around, there's no crickets around, there's no locusts around. I mean, yeah, sure, you can buy them, but for a pretty penny. So I will collect these as much of these as possible. I have bred them in these tubs, you can do it. Oh, so this is a different species, if you can see it. These little guys. I can do it. It's um, not a problem, but you just need them in perfect parameters, lots of microclimates, lots of soil, 
and large size bins and in large colonies. So I have done it, you can do it, and I probably will do it in the future, but for now, let's downsize and let's get into crickets, like I said, and hopefully we see some good results with crickets. And stay tuned for that one. Hot, man, hot. Sun's out, guns out, I suppose, man. It's finally to get the hot weather. You know, we live in a place where it is sunny all winter, but it's also freezing, we get ice, frosts, nice cold days, man. It's nice, sun's out, everything's out, decos are out. Yep. We're gonna get out as many as I can salvage as many as I can and then we'll go get some more later to get this colony growing and this will essentially be my backup or should we say insurance population of food and these small ones centipedes all right keep looking they're really easy to actually look after you just have them in this I've got them in a little ice cream container there's about an inch of soil there's spangle moss there's leaves and there's wood and just a mist they're like damp dark environments and they'll flourish I actually end up getting heaps out of here so they did a good job they were breeding so anyway leftovers I find I would generally put them in the frogs so give them some food. All right, off you go. Nice, I'll enjoy that tonight. I'll do the same for the other tree, breeding tree frogs. So, oh yep, look at these. These guys are plump, man. What the hell is going on here? Okay, yeah, weird. So those are whistling tree frogs and they only come out at night. So they hide during the day or they just kind of do that, bask or just chill on leaves. And then they'll, at night, man, you guys will hear it, they croak. They croak, it's breeding season. So see how it goes. Oh my God. Look how cute this little guy is. Oh my god, look how cute this little guy is. I just can't, I don't have the heart. I just don't have the heart. That is a little baby ice pod. He can go into their breeding colony. I'll give him another, another couple months, you know, to grow up. These guys, fresh leaves, lettuce. These guys love, love lettuce, man. They're omnivores, so fair enough. Do their water as well, actually, but yeah, no much through that. He's looking, he's interested. Mate, you eat it, you don't sit in it. Uh, planning his escape, I reckon. Yeah. Banana today, banana today, they get banana today. There's some for you. So you have to chop it up nice and fine for the skinks to make sure they can eat it. And they might be thinking, why banana? Well, cutting them skinks are omnivores, meaning that they eat insects, they eat even meat, like dog food, they've done little strips of beef, uh, and they eat insects. So not scavengers, oh, and they'll eat a lot of vegetation. So they love their mescaline greens, even like flowerings. So not, yeah. Weird, mixed dyed, uh, so very similar to the blue tongues and shinglebacks, things like that. So I try and keep it as varied as possible. I got two. I try and keep it separate, but I'm sure I'm pretty sure they just eat out of one. Well, they're, they're banana, which is good. Look at that. Good effort. Good effort, guys. Great effort. Oh, okay, my bad. You know what we're doing? We are scrambling some eggs for some lizards. Yep. Not me. Well, maybe I'll have some. Clean skins. Omnivores, they eat scrambled egg, they love scrambled egg, and I haven't given them some scrambled egg in a couple of days now, so I thought, why not? Um, give them a varied diet, so they eat uh, mescaline leaves, spinach, banana, fruit, scrambled eggs, mealworms, crickets, locusts, silkworms. Today, scrambled egg, breakfast. All right, let's get into it. Yeah, I feel pretty basic, uh, nothing too fancy. I'm not gonna have to put too much Effort into it, it is for skinks. I'm probably going to have some because I put like five eggs in there and they're not going to eat five eggs. So, um, yeah, mix it up. Give some, give some eggs. I do like having um, cutting them skinks. Uh, same with, I used to have blue tongues. I might get blue tongues. Hey, maybe maybe to come to the channel near, near you soon. A blue tongue, we'll see. Uh, anyway, I like having uh, cutting them skinks. I love when I had blue tongues because they're easy. You know, they hibernate during the winter in this part of the world. So, down in New Zealand, I want to get super cold and it is good to hibernate it is good to hibernate them it's natural natural process for them and they'll sleep for like the whole three months those skinks man the two cunningham they sleep for like three and a half months it's awesome i mean not awesome but good for them good for me it means less maintenance part of the natural life cycle and two less mouths to feed i suppose during winter and things to worry about you know if i was to do things differently ever if i was to ever do a restart on having reptiles i would have Tortoises, blue tongues, cunning skinks, and that's it, those three, because they hibernate during the winter, so that means basically for three months of the year, you can do whatever you want, and you have to worry too much about your animals, they'll be just fine, because they're sleeping. The other animals, you know, my tree frogs, they're active all year round. Geckos as well, the ones that are climatized, well, live in New Zealand, native to New Zealand, they live in this climate, so it's natural for them. The Leos, I have to look after their parameters, they can't get too cold, so constant heating, constant feeding, they do, you can cool them down, but they don't cool down for too long. They just stop eating for like a few weeks. That's about it. Delicio. Obviously, I'll just cool down, can't give it to them hot. I have to do two dishes because they're, yeah, the male just, the bigger one 
likes to eat all the food. So I split them up and give the female or the smaller one. I'm pretty sure it's male or female. They're the same age and their the size difference is quite uh, substantial. You can tell the difference. So I'll chop it up. Oh, there we go. That's plenty. You know, they won't even eat all that, but that's plenty. You know what else I'll do? I'll add this Arcadia D3 Revitalize. Just some extra supplementation. It's got full spectrum minerals with added vitamin A, D3, and E. So, you know, just a little bit, just so they get a little bit, nothing crazy. You only need like a mouthful of it to provide the benefits. That's it. Yum yum. Yum yum pig's bum. Makes good chewing gum. All right. One bowl here, maybe one bowl here. Guys have breakfast when they wake up. See that? That's growing way too good. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna replicate it across the whole back wall and make it a legit paludarium for the newt. That's epic. I didn't realize it would grow so well. So now I'm gonna do it again and across here and make this look like absolute epic little miniature, I don't know what you wanna call it, side of a bank, side of a water hole. Perfect for our old Ferg. Fresh water, fresh water. Let's fill that up. You looking, you hungry again? You hungry? We'll see, we'll see. All right. Let's see what we got. I've got some crickets in the way. Plan to breed. Got some mealworms left over. Let's see how she goes. So this girl eats a little bit strange, but are you keen or you not keen? Let's have a look. Okay, here we go. Are we dabbling? Yes, we're dabbling. All right, we're keen. Here we go. Yep, she's hungry. She's hungry. Look at that. Keen as a bean. So I can actually hand feed her quite well. She kind of eats a bit weird. She kind of just like licks and does a little peck. I'm not sure if this, she's keen. Let's do the hand feeding approach. This is how she eats. The meal is being annoying. Yeah. Can't get a break. Gosh, she's dumb. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. Oh, how does she even survive? She would literally not survive a day in the wild. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Oh, got there in the end. Oh my goodness. Goodness gracious. She would not survive a day in the wild. Yep, it's official. I wonder you're in captivity. This is how she eats. She can't even eat out of a bowl. Painful. So by being very compact, I'm keeping everything in like a, I don't know what you'd call it. You'd call it probably like one point. You'd go up maybe three meters, but it's like a kind of goes an angle across maybe like one and a half meters out there. So it's literally like, this is this is like the corner. This is me. This is Max the Grot. This is the reptile room, right? It's not, not like a lot of space, but I've got heaps of animals. Plus obviously enclosures outside. And yeah, that's it. I mean, basically, that's it. That's how I'm being efficient. So I am making sure that I am keeping, or being a minimalist, we'll call it, minimalist reptile keeping as best I can. So the least amount of enclosures for now. Now, don't get me wrong. If this ever becomes full time, which is a dream, um, but it doesn't, if it doesn't, that doesn't matter either. I'll still be grinding with these animals. But the idea is that future and future space, you know, next home maybe. I don't know what I was doing like this. I don't know what my heel was flicking out. Oh my god, look at this. So yeah, once I get my future space, my dream space, uh, that's when I'll probably get out of control and probably buy like a million animals. But I suppose we're quite lucky here in New Zealand. We can't um we can't really have much, so that's already a good thing. We can't really have much in regards to we don't have many exotic options available. Very limited s selection. Um, and then also, yeah, it's not that big here, so I wouldn't breed, which is fine. I mean, I have these animals just because I've always had these animals and it's a hobby, so don't need to breed. But anyway, what have we got down here? All right, I've got the, got an extra light. So I attached this because I've got something arriving this week. Super excited. Just some um, clips here to put this in place, lock this, secure this in place, additional bulb, heating area hide stay tuned what i'll probably start doing now is you know i've kind of got my animals i very very quickly built very basic environments and what i want to do next is basically make them more uniformity and make them look a lot nicer if that makes sense and more aesthetically pleasing so for example you know have two enclosures here moved like perfectly spaced um they both look very similar they both house similar aquatic species or maybe just something with like water themed so it just looks nice right because right now there's like my japanese newt I'm gonna get that palladium get that little fern moss across there but then also this is just bare this is just like crap i've basically got crap everywhere this is i think i don't know maybe i'm just like a messy slash minimalist reptile keeper or it's just being a reptile keeper it's like i've got storage it can be a lot cleaner I do have a busy life, I have a 9 to 5, I have a daughter, I have um, sports, I have hobbies, I train um, and I still like to keep these animals but the animals come first and then I suppose cleaning comes later and I suppose, what's the what's the saying? It's like keep your workspace messy and your life's not messy. I don't, I'm pretty sure that's not it but anyway. So, what have we got down there? We've got my Leos. Yes, Leos down the bottom. Leos down the bottom. That's alright. Okay, so lots of things to think about. Lots of things to think about. Been a week since I did my 90% water change, so I better do a 10 percenter. Keep these fish nice and healthy. So that's Hoover, my new addition, the Hillstream Loach. 
I also have, I have a pair of bumblebee gobies. I've got a mystery snail, I've got a ramshorn snail. So my two gobies, and then I also have somewhere, oh, there he is, yeah, old puff. Yeah, boy, there he is, my little pee puffer. It's a small nano tank, I like it. Recently got a 90% change. Nice little world I've got in here. Pretty pretty average or amateur aquascape, but I'm still practicing and learning. Keeping it chill, keeping it low key, keeping it low maintenance until I get a bigger space and then I'll get really into the aquascaping stuff. Make the real cool stuff, eh? Soon, coming soon to a theater near you. You one's going really well. A little uh, wood lice, isopods. There's that one. I gave them some leftover le lettuce. There's some little ones, so there's one little little one hooning around. But I've downsized them, so they're just in this one because it's summer. Don't need too many of them, just enough to keep some of the animals going, but they're not, I mean, they actually make cool little pets, to be honest. They're not necessarily needed during summer. During the winter months, I make big, big tubs and make sure I have plenty of them because they feed the frogs, they feed the geckos if they need it. During winter, the colder months, but otherwise, they kind of just explore. It's an ice cream container, that's it. So it's got soil, spam moss, bits of bark, lettuce, and I just missed it once a day. Brow's looking a bit ratty, so I'm gonna have to replace it today. It's okay. So some flies crawling around. These geckos eating, man. You going outside today, mate? New life, new life outside. Oh, you little kitty boy. So all of them came out of the bamboo hide, all clumped up together. These guys are communal, man. It's pretty cool. Communal gecko. Look, they grasp onto each other, they hide together, they sleep together. Cool. So I've stripped everything out, and I've got this. The thing is, it's a spare tank now, and I'm like, what do I do with it? Everything's still growing. Grass, the fern moss, still looking good. You still do something with it. What should I put in here, guys? I'm in the bottom of the world, we don't have any options. So there's some exotics like blue tongues, bearded drag. I mean, I could have one beardy in there. Probably too small. A baby blue tongue would be fine. Big blue tongue, adult blue tongue, no way. You could definitely get a bit dragon in there. Um, it's pretty big. It's like 90 centimeters by 60 by 60. Uh, could get lots of frogs in there. Don't want to get golden bells. They're just way too, way too loud, I suppose. I mean, these guys croak. These guys, ugh. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, comment below, let me know. Let me know what, I, what you think I should put in here. I could just make it like a New Zealand focused terrarium. You know, just grow ferns in it and just grow it out and get it super bushy and I don't know, who knows. All the geckos are outside now, all the natives, so. Oh, maybe the Leos. Oh, let's get some, get, let's make an epic Leo enclosure. That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, cool, done. Let's get these guys out one by one. Stumpy, Stumpmeister. You doing, Stump? You doing, Stumpy? Here we go, next one. They'll be living with some green, some green geckos, which is fine. There's only three in here, so with four additional. Because Rokawas are quite small, because they're quite small, They'll be okay. They'll do just fine. In this large outdoor enclosure, there's heaps of hides, as you can see. Oh, there's another one. Yeah, I think I've got like 10 hides for seven geckos, so more than enough. So these guys will probably all hide in the same uh, same hide, so get them comfortable. I'll put them in the... Oh, no. Okay, you're gonna explore. All right, see you later, mate. So I normally go to the local park. It's a great place to get isopods. Wild isopods, pesticide free. So let's see what we can find. Hmm? So where do isopods live? Well, they'll be under this, in dark, damp places. So I'll look around, remember to put things back. Yeah, don't want to disturb too many homes. Same thing again here. Nothing, I'm sure we'll find some. Guarantee this one will have it, because this is my usual go-to. Yep, jackpot. Look at that little sucker. Jackpot. Not as many as I'd like, but oh, it's a start. It's just basically gonna go to the frogs. A couple of these guys are too big for the frogs. Like this absolute monster. Look at them. Holy, that guy. He can join the community. A um, couple others in here that are a bit too big for the frogs. The rest of them, the frogs will devour. So, frog food. Look at this, jackpot. See that? Fly to the tree frogs. It's about 10 in there. Just get them started. First, first feed of the day, I suppose. He's like, yeah, boy, I'm ready for those flies, man. This is what they do during the day. They just hunt. Hunt and also just chill. They're nocturnal, so they're just chilling. Look at that, look at that throat. They've been croaking all night, man. Give it a rest, mate. Actually, this is getting, I am getting quite close to him. Oh, there we go, freaked out. Whistling tree frog, getting quite close, which is cool. But um, yeah, he's gonna jump off in a second. There he goes. All right, lunch time or breakfast. There we go, he's off. All right, let's get him in. So what I like to do is, I get the lid ready in there, tip them all in. There we go, oh, almost, they're all in. Okay, I need that lid back. And yeah, they're gonna eat, they're gonna enjoy. They got 10 flies to devour, we'll see. Here we go. The hunt shall begin. Everyone gets a mist. It's not the hottest day, but still, everyone needs their water. So I miss these guys twice a day. This one enclosure and that enclosure. It's a colder day, but you guys still gotta eat, man. Ooh, delicious. All right, let's get that in fruit paste. And then we've got the water. Here we go. That's actually, oh, that's actually not a bad angle. You can easily get that. 
Easy access. You know, I've got a lot of other things going on in my life. I've got a full-time job, a daughter. I have responsibilities. I like to exercise. And I like to keep reptiles. And reptiles do require a lot of care. So, what I've been doing is I've been thinking about ways. I mean, don't even think about ways. You can be more efficient. And that's what I've been thinking about. So, something to do with efficiency is, first thing is, get animals that are uh, easier to keep. Now, let's elaborate on that. So, first things first, I've got these Cunningham skunks. Now, they're pretty easy to keep. And why are they easy to keep? They're easy to keep because, well, firstly, they eat a bit of everything. So, not only do they eat insects, which is super expensive, they also eat uh, vegetables and fruit and cooked mints and dog food. They eat these biscuits, these like reptile or blue tongue biscuits. They eat a bit of everything. So that's the thing. I don't always have to buy, uh, and look, in this part of the world, bottom of the world, insects are super expensive, especially live insects. Our suppliers are not cheap, and I don't want to pay, you know, 40, 50 bucks a week on insects. And I'm not kidding you, that's how much it costs, yeah? And it's just that only, that they'll only last a week, all right? With all the animals, that literally last a week. So, cutting ham skinks. That's my first thing about efficiency is get animals uh, that can eat a bit of everything. Omnivores, and also they hibernate. So these guys hibernated all of winter, three months, they went down. I don't have to worry about a thing. And for me, that's exactly what I'm after. It's ideal. Um, maybe a little bit selfish, but also, I don't know, it's smart. They need it. It's good for their health and longevity as well. So it's a bit of a win-win. So that's the first thing with efficiency. The other thing as well is kind of like downsizing and kind of getting everything compact. So. One of the things I've done is as well is I've put all the native geckos outside now. So everything's outside. Uh, they should be outside. You know, they're endemic to New Zealand and they can live outside in New Zealand. So fantastic. I did have some enclosures inside. I'll still keep the newborns inside for the first six months of their lives just to keep an eye on them, make sure they're healthy, etc. Et but right now they are all outside, which means that I've saved space inside. So I've downsized like two, three enclosures inside already. I've got like two spare enclosures that are empty. I'm probably going to put all my tree frogs in one once they breed for me. And then that's it, I've got my leaves, my newt, and then who knows what's next, I've got the fish inside. You know, there's so much more to come on this channel, but this is just also about being smart with your animals. So you can have all these pets, I've got like 20 animals, um, excluding two cats and a dog, and you can be efficient with it, you can save time, you don't have to spend two hours a night. I think my animals every day only take about 20 minutes because I'm real efficient with my time, so it's like, you know, quick water, food, get rid of any mess, and that's it, you know, I've got automatic misting set up for the frogs. Essentially, I'm only giving manual water to the leos and the skinks and etc, etc. The newt's really, really easy. He's got a little filter in his enclosure. Um, everything's by uh, essentially it's like a little waterfall paludarium. He's super chilly, only eats every two, three days. So that's the other thing as well I like about these animals. They don't need to eat every day. Um, that's why you kind of go away for a couple of days and it's not the end of the world, as long as they have fresh water and you've plucked them up with some good food prior. But anyway, on to the next one. I don't know if you've ever had Cunningham skinks before, but the best way to handle them is when they're cold. Yeah, nice and cold in the morning, first thing, so prickly, so prickly. So it's funny, these little, like all the spikes on their back, if you go against it ever so gently, it kind of pricks you. It's like a self-defense mechanism, and look at that tail. So they can stick themselves or get stuck between rocks and protect themselves, but anyway, I think this is a gill. It's a lot smaller than the other one. They're about the same age. I've been told they're the same age. Gorgeous. It's the only time you can handle them. They bite, they're aggressive, they're super, super shifty, super quick. Anyway, we'll put her back. Cover her with some leaves and her log. It's the only time I can handle them when they're cold. So it's day, I think it's day five of having these crickets. I'm trying to breed. And I'm just doing it clean. This is the easiest way to do it. Have a bin set up, all ready to go. Fresh paper towels. I don't have to do too much. Oh, yep, seeing some ladies in the egg box, which is good. This is all fresh, so I'm gonna transfer that over. The apple's fresh from today. This orange is not so fresh. And I'm gonna gently just transfer this because they're gonna be in it, not the end of the world. But yeah, crickets are grubby, man. Like, I'll show you. I'll show you what it looks like. They're grubby little... Oh, yes, there we go. Look at that. Oh, yep, yep, they're going crazy because I've disturbed them. They're not having too much fun. I'll move this. Yep, all the gills are in there. That's good. Oh, crushing you. Cool, so that's the breeding bin. Do that, basically, so that it can get out. Their water dish. Top up. And I make sure, obviously, their breeding bin is always moist. 
these guys and put them in their new bin. I have heard this about crickets. And the reason why you do this is because it's then easier to A, clean them and move them around when you need to, but also hygiene, right? I want them to be healthy. I want them to feel like they're in a good environment. I want them to be clean. I want to make sure that they are breeding or living in the best environment they can. And I've got them on a heat pad as well. So that's to make sure that they're always at a good temperature. It's still cold, starting to get into spring. Um, and it is cold part of the world. And the reason why you need to give them lots of food is because apparently they eat each other. I did the first couple days. Look at this. Look at that. That's just, that, that will get clean. So I'm back on the heat pad. What I've been told is that you're supposed to do 24, no, 48 hours of their soil, then you take it out, pollination done, get around a big lane done. So this is the first bin. That's good. I've got it on the heat pad as well. So this is, I think, day, day three. 10 days, I'm hoping. But I keep it on every day because I kind of have to. Oh, yep, yeah, I've got some food. Here we go. Yeah, this one likes to eat by hand. She doesn't eat out of the bowl, eh? It's weird. I don't know why. I mean, it's kind of cool. Let's go to some meal. She looked hungry. She was like eyeballing me. When the eyeball, yeah. I mean, when reptiles eyeball you, that's when you know it's bad. That's when you know, yep, give me some food because I'm hungry. I'm like worried she's always going to like pinch my finger. Yep. So like I said, I mean, because reptiles mostly, if they're, if they're satisfied, they're going to chill, they're going to hide, they're going to bask. They're just going to stay nice and, oh, Jesus. Yep, there we go. Yep. No. Nah. Um, yeah. So she's hungry and it's fine. This is why I check up on them every day. Make sure that they're happy. But yeah, my Leo's are pretty chill. This is actually a friend's Leo. I'm just looking after her while he's on his OE. They're pretty good. So my other Leo's in this Leo every two, three days. They'll eat. That's fine for them. Incredible animals. Now I do have a boy and two girls, but I have no intention of breeding because when you breed, you must think about all the babies and also are you going to sell them all? And I live in a country where exotic pets, there's just not enough people keeping them. You know, the, the supply is more than the demand, meaning that right now it's not great to breed and sell reptiles in this country. Uh, when I was like 15, it was the best time to breed them. So I'll put that into perspective for you. So back then a leopard gecko was probably like a thousand dollars and these days they're like 250, 300. And a blue, I remember I bought a blue tongue skink when I was like 15 and it was $800 from the pet store and I was like, oh my God, that's epic. And now you can get a blue tongue skink for 150 bucks. And it's simply because a few reasons, um, supply demand, so that there's more out there than are desired. We also have a huge, not huge, but like adoption problem where there's heaps that are just taken in there. I don't know, people keep them for a couple of years and then they want to rehome them. I'm, I've adopted a blue tongue and I'm really excited because I haven't had a blue tongue since I was uh, like 17 years old. So it's been a long time, over over 10 years now, easily. Oh, yep, there we go, Jesus. You see that? Mealworms are getting smaller and she's getting keener. So I've adopted a blue tongue from someone who no longer wants it. And that's how I like to, that's how I prefer to do it. I prefer to, that's enough sprinkles. That's how I prefer to do it. I prefer to adopt because, you know, if you're buying babies from a breeder, you're only, I suppose, contributing to the problem in this country. Um, whereas if I can adopt an animal that needs a new home, it's, you know, it's a lot older. Otherwise, it's probably not gonna find a home or, I don't know. I'm just sorry, I'm rambling a bit because um, I'm focusing, but yep, that's that's why I want to do it. I want to rehome because rehoming is probably uh, better for the animal that needs the new home, I suppose. I feel bad for them. They're a lot older and, you know, I have the space and capacity to look after them. Whereas, you know, if you buy babies from breeders, they're just going to breed more and then you're going to have more animals in the population potentially that aren't going to find homes. And that's simply because we've, got, like I said, we've got a supply versus demand issue here and it's the supply that outweighs the demand. Whereas, you know, maybe in the States, there's so many millions of people keeping reptiles and homes are a lot easier to find. So I'll leave you with this. Me go through a car wash, man. Look at those colors. So relaxing. Until the next one. Stay tuned.